Good. Um, so I'll talk about Palm Media Week Docker. And um, most people know me. This is like my 13th um, talk on, on an SMWCon, which I love. Uh, first one was in St. Louis. Um, so if you want to know more about my background, uh, we are sponsors, so you'll have plenty of time to, to do that. I'll not use up the time here for that. Um, in the agenda, um, I am going to introduce a bit of Docker for those who don't know anything about it, but most people know. Um, I'll talk about the MediaWiki Docker images that are available officially by the MediaWiki Foundation. Um, then there are limitations of Docker files, which were the motivation uh, to do a Python um, controlled um, installation with Docker files. Um, and for that to understand, um, I can show you how we did that before that with bash scripts. We've got the open research mig um, migration use case. Um, this will be interesting for the people who um, learn about the Confident project that is also project sponsoring this um, conference. Um, there was a older wiki since 2008, I think, which we wanted to migrate. And for the testing of that, we set up um, different Media Wiki backends. So basically, the main thing is we're not talking front end here in this. We're talking about um, the bare bones um, infrastructure that you need to run the, run it. So, the Media Wiki works. What the prerequisites are: the installation uses debugging extension parts. Um, if you have access to a remote computer, you can try that while we are doing this. If you're here in the room, please don't try this out here, because it will eat up all the bandwidth. Um, there will be downloads of uh, megabytes and gigabytes of data. Um, if you do it on a remote machine, that's OK. Tim that just did that an hour ago for us uh, so that I can show you a fresh install with all the details that has been done on our machine on the RWTH server that we own. Um, so. The part I want to get to is the extensions part, because that's where um, the fun starts. So I need to make sure that the time will not be um, over by uh, the point. So let's talk about Docker first. If you want to learn more about Docker, just go to docker.com, get yourself a Docker, and learn that this is a new virtualization concept. New means like. I think it's seven years old or something. And by the time that um, Docker got into the game, things got um, a lot easier. Um, in Semantic Media Wiki, there has been a discussion about how to use Docker. So here's your page about that. And you see all the solutions that have been out there. The Palm Media Wiki Docker is in here, but also some other options. So you. you know, this has been discussed quite a while. And in the past few years, people came up with different solutions how to use Docker for Semantic Media Week. If you want to use your Semantic Media Wiki, you need a Media Wiki, and then you need to install extensions. The Media Wiki Docker images have been officially out there in the Docker Hub. So any Media Wiki can be started right from that hub. And uh, usually, you get the latest versions in there. Um, you can go by the a minor version, like, like going 138.4, which would be one that is officially supported there. And uh, this is most interesting since 139 LTS is coming up soon. Um, we'll probably see 139 in November. And then like the whole show goes again, um, that you've seen in my last talk when I was talking about Media Wiki 135 migration, you probably want to try out things. And this is basically the motivation, try out things on Docker first to see whether you've got problems with any extensions. And that makes your life easier. Why do we use Python? So the problem with um, Docker is that there is a syntax for so-called Docker files. And you'd probably also have to learn that syntax if you wanted to use Docker files. And there are so-called run commands, which you can say, please do this for me, do this for me, and so on. But it's not a programming language. There are not the proper statements that will give you some if or some for loop or some while loop or some logic or no object orientation. There are no classes, no nothing. Uh, so that's very awkward. So most people that try to use um, Docker and automate the installation with Docker end up doing some kind of programming anyway. So the 
simplest way to do that for us in the beginning was to use um, a bash script. So this is the original script we were using in 2015. See, that was done October 2013. We've been using it until 2019. We, you cannot see that. My mic is muted now. And we're back to the point where we have the old uh, ProfiWiki installed script. That was a bash script. And you see the way this was programmed was with like bash um, functions. And the problem we had was that one was it still didn't cut because we couldn't debug things. Uh, we couldn't really try out things nicely. And it took forever. Um, it was hard to test. And so we did decided um, to move on to a Python version of things. So basically, uh, we also wanted to be uh, capable of just doing um, a command line control of things. And here you see what we did to start like a wiki. What you do is you say, I want a certain version. You say, I want version 1353, and I just want one wiki. I want Semantic Media Wiki 323. I want this to run on port 9780. The SQL should be installed, installed in the uh, MariaDB should work on port 9736. Um, the thing should have it, a wiki ID, so it should be um, capable of running together with the PyCert party media wiki, wiki push toolkit, so that you can push pages back and forth, just like the sync solution you've seen um, in, in the last talk. And then you say what extensions you would like to install, admin links, breadcrumbs, and so on. And then you say what logo you would have. And in the end, this should install everything, run this thing, and get you going. We've got to get back to our talk. The software behind this is called PyMedia Wiki Docker. That's typical for um, Python um, software. Um, it's an open source project, so you'll find it on GitHub. Same name, PyMedia Wiki Docker. Uh, and the main thing is it's installable via the standard um, PyPy package manager. So you can do a pip install PyMedia Wiki Docker, and you'll be all set. How does it work? What you want to do is that you want to install with the docker compose command, which gives you images for your database. And you can select, for instance, um, a certain version of MariaDB, which could be your 10.8, 10.7, 10.6, 10.9, 10 something like that. And you want images for your media wiki, which are version dependent. We do these in pairs. So if you choose to have a MediaWiki 127, an old version of MediaWiki, that will be one image creating a container that runs on port 9080, talking to a MariaDB to, uh, working um, on port 9306. And now we just keep counting. If you add more MediaWikis, the port number will go up for your MediaWiki, and the port number will go up for your MariaDB. In the end, the whole show will be installed and started. And then you can see where, for instance, your old extensions, extensions work. And if you use the sync commands that you've seen, like a page sync, or you use wiki push, you can push your whole wiki in, into there and say, these are the 10,000 pages I'm using. Are they still looking the way I was expecting them? Is everything working? And you could do some kind of um, automatic testing or manual testing to find out whether that is the case. And that's. The, 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 the interesting thing, you don't want to spend too much time on that. And um, PyMedia Wiki Docker makes this available for like the rest of us. You don't even have to know how Docker works to, to get that working, um, if you're lucky. The problem is this is like open source software. And uh, hopefully, there are no bugs in there and so on. But that's why it's open source. And if something is not working, simply give me a ticket, and I'll try to fix it. The pre prerequisites for this to work is that you need a Docker Compose version 2. At the time when we did that, that was already uh, only in beta. So um, it was quite awkward to install it. 
I just updated everything to Ubuntu 22.04 or 4 for showing what we are doing here. And there, things are really easy, because you only have to do the standard um, installation of Docker and Docker Compose, and you'll be all set. So the minimum that should work is that you get your Docker version running, and that you can do a Docker run Hello World in your environment, and then you can go. Next thing is that you would like to do a compatibility test, so do your Docker commands and see what Compose version you have. At the time we started this, it was 2.4. We are now at 2.12. This is all only checking. The next thing you want to do is a pip install PyMedia Wiki Docker. That will automatically install the whole PyMedia Wiki Docker. And then you can do the MDOW cluster dash reef. And let's see whether we can have a live version of that. Hopefully, this time you will see what I'm doing. And it says I'm, I've got a version 043, which was the one that we did, I think, yesterday. Next thing you want to do is check all the options that you have, which are a lot. So you can say, which wikis do I want, which extensions do I want, user password, base password, and so on. And uh, as I told you, Tim has been running that on our RWHTH server um, um, this morning. Uh, how long did, did that run, Tim? Yeah, I think if you look, uh, it was about 15 minutes. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that RWTH has a gigabit internet line. So downloading all the stuff on that server was easy. Also, that server has like a two four terabyte SSD files and whatnot. So that's a pretty decent machine that is uh, easily capable of, of doing that. Um, you can do that at home at your laptop, even with a 50K line or something. It will just take a little longer. And the good thing about Docker is it will only take long once. When everything is um, downloaded, it won't take that long anymore. So the main command is mwcluster-f, which starts by default five different media wikis. 127, 31, 35, 37, and 38. And uh, this is like a moving target. We can discuss which media wikis make sense to install, because some people will say, why on earth would I need a media wiki 127? So we still do, because we've got some old wikis running out there, and we, we want to still migrate them. Um, but others say, OK, I'm, I'm on the edge here. I want the 138, or I want the 35, which is the LTS version. You can do that and say that you only want one. Next thing that happens is that the download will uh, happen, and um, all your Docker stuff will be installed. And all the stuff that is needed will be copied. These are the ingredients, like your init, your database, the database um, filling from a, so that you get an empty page, um, the installation of extensions, the updating of your data adding a sysop user, starting the run jobs, adding a cron tab entry. Those are all steps you usually have to do manually when you start a MediaWiki installation. And this is all done automatically. This is the part where the Docker file actually happens. And the thing is here, all this is generated in advance by the Python code. So basically, it's a two-step process. First, the Python code generates your um, scripts, which are according to your settings. And the second, second part is that the um, Docker environment actually does these things. In the end, you should end up with running Docker containers. You can do that live again. This is what you can do. You can do show me all the images. And in my case, you see I downloaded two MariaDBs, uh, a 10.8 and a 10.9. And those images are 384 megabytes each. I downloaded MediaWiki images, quite a few, and they're on average a gigabyte. Since they share some code, it's not actually that you have all to download like six gigabytes to get that running. Uh, it will be a bit less, but it will be a lot. Then you can do a Docker PS, which is basically the same command as um, on, on Unix, where you can say which are the running processes, and you see quite a few Docker images are running here. And they have the ports that we assigned here. 
There is um, an option where you can test things by hand. So you can simply say, OK, do I have a wiki where I expect it? Yep, on port 9080, I've got a wiki running. Which version is it? It's the version 127.7, as expected. Let's see about the port 9081. We've got another wiki running. That's a 131.16. I want the one on port 9082. Another wiki, 135.8. I want one on port 983. That's another one. It's broken. It's got a deprecation in here. This is because this image was started like two days ago, and I didn't touch it since then. The bug has been fixed. So if I run that on another machine, this deprecation problem will not show anymore uh, because um, I added um, something to, to the local settings to fix that. Now we've got the latest one, which also has a deprecation message for the variables. That would be your 138.4. This is tedious, so I like it better and added an, um, an option where you can simply say, please check whether things have been working. So that's mwcluster-c, MW uh, which is a Python automated version of what I just did. It goes from port to port, checks all the um, special version files, and looks what's in there. How much time have I got? Pardon me? 20 minutes is still still available. That's good, because I wanted to go to the extensions. So if you do a dash D here, um, it will actually show you uh, the special version content. See here? This is uh, the computer-readable way of what's in your special version file. Your installed libraries, your installed extensions, your entry points, and so on. And that's pretty important, because I intend to have also check the extensions, whether they have been properly installed. That's not in a feature yet, but that's the next feature I'm interested in, making sure that after the installation, we actually check are the extensions there, and maybe even checking whether they properly work. So here are some more examples. The example you see here is you want uh, a single installation, and then you would have that on port 8048. Let's see what you get like, technically. If I look at the, from, from a terminal to this, you see there is a directory called .pymediawiki.ca. That's in your home directory. And that has subdirectories for all the MediaWiki installations you asked for. And each of these MediaWiki installation subdirectories, sorry, I'll, I'll try to do that with an explorer that you better see what's going on. So you see, these are the files that are in that are in one such directory. Uh, <clears throat> you've got the compose file. I don't want to open that with Xcode. I like Atom better. So this is a compose file that was generated. You want a MySQL compatible relational database. This was an old installation with a 10.6. It gives you the password and root password. It gives you the ports, what you have to do, where your wiki image is, and so on. So basically, this is no uh, rocket science in terms of Docker. We just do our standard Docker thing here, and uh, you have full control of what's going on there. You could now, if you want to de debug that, say, I'm, I'm not interested in this further automation. I'm, I'm just going from this. I'm going to change it to my needs. You could do that and simply say, um, I'm using a Docker Compose here. I'm going to change the whole, like the install extension shell script. I don't like it. This is the generated version, which says, OK, how do I install? And see, this one is pretty simple, because for admin links, you only have to do a git clone. The others, there are different um, installation styles for different extensions. Some install themselves via Git. Some install themselves with, via Composer. And others are installed via download. 
And that's where it gets interesting. So how do I specify what to do? Some even change the way they have been in, uh, to be installed in their lifetime. So they used to have like a require once um, way of installing. And uh, these days you install them differently. So this is where the whole extension show starts. If you want to have um, extensions, um, you need to modify the extensions JSON file. You can use the standard one that we are currently using, which has a few extensions, but that's only like two dozen or so. And I don't know how many extensions do we have out there, Cynthia? How many different extensions do we have currently? A thousand, two thousand? Yeah. So the problem is I, I, I cannot, as a single developer, work on all that. If this would be like a community, we could work on uh, providing all the extension details. But the problem with these extensions is that they sort of behave differently. And you have to make sure that this difference in behavior is accounted for. Let's see I, whether I can make this bigger. Is this better readable now? So let's look at one like the admin links extension, which is pretty popular. Um, if you want to use that, you have to say what it is, um, where you find it, and then this one is installed via GitHub link. Then it has a certain cutoff point where the require once was not used anymore, and that is version 131. So if you specify that, if you use it in a media wiki that is older than that, it will use a require once to install it. For the newer ones, it will even use the new install thing. I'm also added a purpose so that you can have list of these and, and see what's going on. There's also a since and a URL for the link itself. This is like for extensions. Um, we might add uh, GUIs to this and make this even more uh, accessible to people. Apparently, it's only like command line stuff. But there's no reason why this Python should not be controlled by some, some GUI. Let's look at some other extensions that work differently, like the ones that are installed via a Compose. Let's see what we find here. There you have one. The MAP7 extension. That needs a composer entry. And so you uh, specify the composer entry here and say, this is what I want. Also, the whole version handling has to be done via this um, JSON file. If you want a different version of your extension, you have to modify the, it here, because I don't do that on the command line, except there is no such thing yet. So if you want different set of extensions, the best bet you have is change your extension JSON files so that you get a, a different list of extensions that you can work with. So basically, this was the... Um, main part of, of my talk, and we could uh, dive into problems that you have and, and questions. Yeah, first of all, I um, really appreciate your work, because um, also I have a 300 line Docker build file, yeah. and uh, in parallel, the local settings. Keeping all in sync. So, a few questions. I think that's pretty neat, but of course, it's restricted to the most common use cases. So, you uh, automatically include, uh, um, yeah, um, include ones or the uh, extension include statement also in the local settings file that's deployed in Docker container. But can you also specify additional settings? Yes, you can. Okay. Let's look at that. I didn't show the source code yet, but this is open source, so we can look into the source code. So here's my development environment, and you can see what the um, structure of the code is. So you've got the MW Docker and the resources below that, and below that you've got your settings. So there is this MW your local settings speak code because I'm using Jinja templates. So I have to do some template language stuff there. Um, it, it just uses the um, original version, except you can use Jinja stuff in there. OK, yeah, great. And 
And if you have like specific versions for versions, this is like what you get. And you can also change the logic if you like. That's just great. And um, another question. So if you have, I mean, most extensions came from weird nowadays, and even if they are just downloads, you can download the repository. Um, and, but if I want to have a certain branch or certain commit, is it also possible yet? No. This is a feature we'd have to add. This is one of the problems here in extension like JSON. If you want to be specific about this, we'd have to add a subsection for each of the entries here. If you look at, at a section like yeah. this, this only specifies um, an extension, but not the versions of the extension. Maybe so you, a nested. So you'd have you'd have to do something like versions, and then go with a new set of things. So we'd have to change the the setup of the JSON file here. Yeah, it's feasible, but I didn't do that yet. There is a certain need for that. I personally didn't feel that, but feel free to do an issue. I mean, of course, you should not you should not uh, build a product or system based on certain commits or repository. But of course, if you test something or try to figure out, I, I fully understand yeah. that. Currently, you you certainly have to do some callback to to do that. And, and, and change this thing, or do the way that I told you, uh, generate the things up front and do the manual patches then. Uh, but I'd love to do that in a, in a way that is more automated. The systematic way would obviously be better. Okay. And yeah, as you already showed, finally, you have this Docker file, um, which is also open for further modifications. Yes. Because it's just there. It's, yeah. it's it just a normal Docker Compose and, and so on there. It's just that. And in the Docker build file. Yeah. So basically, the, the, the one that I didn't show, which I might want to show, is the Python on Rails. Because that's the library that I'm using. And I, I should t tell people that I'm doing that. This is not what I did. This is like uh, Gabriel Damastier. He did the Python library for uh, being able to control Docker. That's the main thing here. Yeah. I'm just using it. Yeah, but it's, I mean, that's open source. We're using stuff. Yeah. Making it some yeah. more specific. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yep. What other questions would you have? If there are no further questions, I think we are done. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. <clears throat>